Good morning. It is Monday, the 2nd of October. It's um, probably coming up to about, oh, that's a cup, yeah. Just about coming up to 5 to 7. I've just had breakfast. I'm having a cup of tea, playing a game. Um, and in a bit, I'll be getting everybody up. We have to walk to school today because we have no car again, but that's okay. The exercise is good for all of us. And then I'll let you know what the plan is for the day when we get back. Who knows? <sighs> plan for the first part of the day is to take parcels down and post them off. <laughs> okay guys, I have done everything for eBay I'm going to be doing today. It's not a lot, it's a very easy morning for me. I've obviously sent off the three sales I had. I've listed, I think I listed six items by accident instead of five, which doesn't really matter. Two of which are on auction, one's only for fun. It's probably not going to sell, and if it does, I have put in the description, this is not going to work, because it's so old, I don't know how it's been kept, and it's just one one pack film for a Polaroid camera. Now, somebody might want to buy it to try it, just for fun, but let's put it up for a laugh, see if anybody will buy it. Now, uh, the other thing I put on auction was three rolls of film because I know they will sell and then next weekend I'll put on another, another I think I'll put on five next time because I want to get rid of some Tesco film um, But because basically I, f I figure if I'm going to go out and take decent photographs with my cameras and film I'm going to buy new other than black and white I won't, wouldn't sell the black and white because black and white lasts very well I've got a ton of developing to do so I might do some of that later this week because that'll be fun uh, so currently I am now making videos for the channel. Obviously I'm doing this one. I've done a flip through of the Colour in Heaven magazine, which you'll have seen by now. I'm doing a Colour in Chat, which you will have seen by the time you see this video. I'm going to do a flip through of the Wizard of Oz Colour in Heaven magazine, just because I really like it. And somebody did ask for a um, video on all my uncoloured books. I said, do you want it? And somebody said yes. I think it's going to have to be in two to three videos i will probably do the color in heavens on their own because there's that many of them <laughs> they really are there's a great big stack of them um and then i've got a shelf and a bit full so i've got some books out for halloween that i haven't colored in that i'm thinking of coloring in um but i will just do that when I come to that section. So that's going to probably be a three section video. It's going to be mad. And in fact, I probably won't do the Colour in Heaven one first. I'll probably do the top shelf, which has got quite a lot on it. Then the other sh second shelf and then the Colour in Heavens. But I'm going to crack on with this now because I want to get as much of this done uh, as I can because this will be videos for me to put up every day this week. Um, so Colour in Chat will be tomorrow. Uh, the, the flip throughs I'll just put through up today and tomorrow anyway. And then the Uncoloured Books one will be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that's a video pretty much every day this week, which is great. And I might do another Colour in Chat later on in the week if I can. So, yeah. Right, I'm going to crack on. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I just filmed a good chunk of uh, videos. I went to change the memory card because I thought this has got to be filling up. And now the camera's decided to tell me there's no card in the camera, even though there is. Does this, if I don't blow on it, I think there's some dust on the contact somewhere, uh, but it doesn't seem to be writing, so I'm going to give it a rest and have a break. Get the videos I've got up on there and start getting them ready. And hopefully it'll work. If not, I'll have to film on this camera. It's not ideal because it flips up and doesn't flip out. So it's hard for me to see what's going on and keep everything in frame. But if I have to, I have to. So I'm going to get these ones sorted um, and start editing them together. So you see it's darker in your so turn my lamp off. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Right, school day's over. You might be able to hear it in the background. She's a mermaid who can walk on land, apparently. I'm just sitting here uploading some videos to the channel. You'll have seen all of these. By the time, this is a bit, bit straggly because it's wet. Go on then, be a mermaid, show us your fins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're so funny. You good girl? Um, so I'm just doing a list challenge and. Go on, show them your dance. <laughs> And then I'm gonna oh read my book. <laughs> she fell over. Because <laughs> um, I'm really quite Ow. into this book now. And you all right? My and there's not much left, so I want to get this finished. I can't find my Kindle though. It's around somewhere. My I can't get up. Oh well, you'll have to stay on the floor then, won't you? I'm 
Ooh. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this list challenge, do what I'm doing with the videos, and read my book. Hello everybody, it's Tuesday. I forgot to vlog this morning. Well, yeah, sort of been a bit weird today. I have had a few sales. I've posted one off because it came in before 10 o'clock. The rest came in uh, late, so I've got one that's paid for and one I'm waiting for payment on. Other than that, everything's okay. Jennifer's home. She's uh, watching the Thumbs Up family. And I'm going to colour a picture in a Kirby Rosanna's book. I, um, I've got another book to read here off of my TBR, which is called Songs of Willow Frost. And I'm going to be colouring in this book very soon. And Jennifer's going to have a quick look at it now because she's nosy. Yeah, yeah, this way. Yeah, I know. Doesn't matter. Right. Right, I'll see you in a bit. Look what I found on my bed. It's your little black cat. It's my Zeddy. Hey, Zed. Okay. So that's Tuesday night. Tuesday's done with. Everybody's going to bed. Here's a little cat. I'll see you in the morning. It's Wednesday! Guess what that means. What day is it, Jen? PE day. She loves PE. So we're going to go down to school now. Before we crack on with some testing camera stuff. Okay, so I've battery tested some cameras. Uh, the ones I've battery tested are all working. Um, there's one or two that I do want to put through their paces with a film in it. I'm actually going to go out for a walk in a bit uh, with the Nikon FE to try and use that roll up and give that a test. I've also got a Yashka, I think, in my handbag, which has got some film in it and I've got that basically drafted. I need to, to get that done so I can photograph it. So I've got a few things downstairs that I can photograph. I need to clean the cameras, they are a bit, a bit dirty. Um, so a few years ago, I found, before Covid, a bulk film loader at the charity shop for a pound or two pounds. It wasn't much. And originally I was going to sell it on eBay and then I thought, you know what, I could potentially use this myself. So what I did was I bought a, a roll of uh, Roly Retro because it was the cheapest one, 400. It's uh, 30 metres. Um, it says open in a dark room only, but as long as you've got a changing bag, you can open it which I do. I watched a load of videos on how to put the film in, how to bulk roll it into thing, and went about my business, used it for a bit. Then obviously COVID happened, I stopped using it. Obviously I'd had Jennifer and I'm going to all, she, I, I didn't do much photography. Now I'm trying to do eBay and all this stuff. And I thought I'd bulk roll some rolls. Now I did find one that I had put a DX coder on. I do have some more of these somewhere. So these are DX coding labels because these have no DX on them. Now, old cameras, manual cameras, which I do have some of somewhere, but not here, I don't think. There's one, is there one here? No. Um, you used to set the film speed manually. So you'd set it to 100, 250, uh, 400, 800, and so on. Now, modern cameras have something called DX coding, which is this, this little silver mark tells you what speed this film is. So I bought some of those. I got some more downstairs somewhere. Figured out how, which way they went on and put one on uh, so that I could use this one at the correct speed in a camera that automatically sets DS speed. Now, if you've got, this is um, a point and shoot one that works, that I've got, that I'm going to sell. I bought it in a charity shop, as you can tell. It's probably not worth much, but I will sell it because I don't need it. I've got billions of cameras. This would automatically set the DX coding for me. So if I put this roll of film in it, it would automatically set it to 400 because it's got this coding sticker on it. If I put a blank one in, it would default to 100 speed. So I've just got to remember that if I use it in a, one of these without a label in it, it's going to default to 100. Um, in DX coded cameras. However, I do have some more somewhere. I think I'll, if I can find the 400s, ah, I've just dropped a bit. I will put them, put them on. It makes life a little bit easier. So I am going to roll some 20, 15 to 20 exposure rolls. For testing, we don't need 
a lot of film. I'm finding I'm using up my 36 and 24 rolls of film all the time and I'm taking just rubbish photos that just to test that the camera's working. So why not do it with this cheap film? This probably worked out about, I don't know, I can't remember how much it was, but it's a lot cheaper than buying a roll. I will work out how much to buy it today would be. Um and see and maybe invest in another bulk roll of film later but it would probably be a 200 speed or 100 speed film I don't know yet anyway I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to get this to load because last time I, I loaded it backwards which is okay with colour you could red scale it but it's black and white and I've no idea what would happen if you did that that would be interesting but anyway I need the so I've taken the tape taken it out and so I'm yeah I'm gonna crack on and I'll show you <sighs> But I have done it. I have also got a roll of film in the Zeiss Iconta camera and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got two shots left on that, I'm going to put my handbag, take that with me and use that as well because I want to make a video on that. So a few years ago I made, long before Covid, a video about the Kodak brownie, the box brownie I've got which so many people have really loved. Um, and I want to make more films about using these cameras, but I actually want to use them as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out, use the roll of film in there, develop it to see what it looks like, and then do an overview of this camera, give it a good clean. It is clean. It's one that I've bought to sell. It was in my auction lot, and they sell for quite a lot. It's about 30 quid, um, and it's in very good condition. So I do want to get it tested. So I want to try and get all the films out of all my cameras. That would be something, wouldn't it? So I've got a few weeks to try and do that. So I'm going to crack on. And I'll see you afterwards. I'm back. I actually have done it now. I've figured out what I did wrong. This is now correct. This is just 15 shots. Um, I am going to make a couple more without the DX coding. So I'll save this one that needs DX. I'm going to do some without DX in. And if I find the DX coder stickers, I can put them on anyway. It doesn't matter. So. I've just done some maths on the bulk film stuff. Um, and the best two I can find would be the cheapest two that you get more bang for your buck. Unless you really want, I mean, if I really wanted a roll of Tri-X, I would just buy a roll of Tri-X because I love Tri-X. But for bulk film loading and testing cameras, I would go for the cheaper rolls. Now, the two cheap rolls are something called Foma Pam, which is lovely, and Kent Me, which is made by Ilford. So I worked out that you would save on Kentmere if you bought it from Analog Wonderland £31 if you were rolling 36 exposure films which we're obviously not because we don't want to use up that much film and we're going to go out in a minute so you would be saving you get just over 18 rolls per 100 foot of film and at the price of Kent Me on Analog Wonderland for one roll of 36 exposure 400 is £5.50, which is a good price, but you'd still save £31. And this is around the same with Foma Pan on AG Photographic. Now, AG Photographic, uh, another film sales and lab in Birmingham, I've bought from them before, no problems with them at all. And yeah, it works out around £31 saving there. So for testing cameras, this is best. And there is nothing wrong with Kentmere and there is nothing wrong with foam pan. I have used both in the past. And for the safety or saving the money, I would probably go with either Kentmere 400 or foam pan, depending on my finances. And it's only a couple of quid. So the bulk roll of foam pan, 100 foot, is £65.47 on uh, AG Photographic Lab uh, and Analog Wonderland, their Kentmere bulk film, let me just go back to it, is £68. So there's hardly anything, it's like less than £3 difference. Uh, one's 200 and one is 400 and they, they I'll be honest, Kentmere photographs look absolutely stunning that they've used. It is good film. Like I said, it is made by by Ilford. I'm going to run a few more uh, rolls of film through the bulk loader as long as I can still do it. <laughs> but at least I've worked it out. So yeah, and uh, I love Tri-X but I don't think I'd ever buy a bulk roll of it. It's £225 for 100 foot which is 18 rolls. You're saving pennies on it. On a roll, you know. 
and, and I've worked it as if you're buying, if you bought 18 rolls of Tri-X, and it's pennies. If you're buying 18 rolls of Fomapan, you're selling, saving £30. So I love Tri-X, and if I was going somewhere where I thought I want that look, I would just buy a couple of rolls at their 40, because they're £14 a roll. I once bought a bulk, um, not bulk roll, but what we call a brick. A uh, photograph is called a brick of uh, Tri-X. Now this is 10 rolls shrink wrapped. That's how they come out the factory, shrink wrapped into 10 rolls. And I bought a brick and a brick is over, 10 rolls over £100 now. I think it was about 70 or 80 when I bought it. It was a long time ago. And everything's going up and you have to pay. If you want to do this hobby, you have to pay. Photography, film photography is not expensive. In the, Once you know what you're doing. But it's more expensive than digital. Digital, you can take thousands of photographs and not worry about it. But you've got to look in the sense that how important is your time? Because obviously, if you're taking a thousand photographs in a day, how long is it going to take you to go through those photographs on your computer when you get home to find maybe the five or six that you want? Because we do, you do tend to just rapid fire them, machine gun them, as we would say. But with film photography, because you've got less rolls per less shots per roll, you tend to slow down and you think more about it. You definitely roll, you've only got at the top end 36 to go through. If you're bulk rolling, you can bulk roll as short as 10 if you wanted to. I've gone to 15 for testing cameras. If I was going to go out shooting and I had, I had some Kentmere and I wanted to shoot that and I wanted, I thought I might as well bulk roll it. I would bulk roll it as uh, 24s. So what you do is you do 24 and then add three. What I might do is make a video on it because all the video I've shown either don't show them loading the cassette properly, i.e. they're not close enough, or it goes so fast you can't see what they're doing. And, I, and that's the problem I had. I am now going to try and load another roll. Eek! So as you can see, I am now out and about. I'm out of breath because I've had to walk up a very steep hill to get here. There's one thing about Wales, there's lots of hills. Um, this is the site of the old Mariah Chapel and Cemetery. Um, there used to be a very old chapel here. Um, it was too small, so they built the big one down on the main road. And this one was knocked down. I think I'm probably sitting on one of the walls. I have no idea, some steps here. I assume it must have been up here, going further back a little bit, maybe. The cemetery behind me, as you see, you can't see many graves, you can see a few, was in the 1980s very, very overgrown. And in the 90s became quite dangerous. They had the Cross Keys College kids up here at some point, or some kids up here, clearing it up and they did a great job. Um, and what they did is they removed all the old headstones, sadly. Uh, what they did do though is move many of them to the side. You can see the one there that's a big uh, chest tomb. But as you can see around the edge is all the some, some of them, not all of them, because there were some big cross ones as well. And there's another, there's one sunken there. So wherever you walk here, there are graves. You, you don't know where they are because they are somewhere within this patch. Um, in a minute, I'm going to go and take some photographs of this. I can only think this must have been part of the chapel. I don't know. The steps going up. I can't see it being part of the cemetery. But then I don't know because it was gone long before I moved to Risca. I don't know when they knocked it down. I'll have to have a look. Um, so I've got three cameras with me today. I've got the Nikon FE, which I'm still getting to grips with. This is this one. I'm using that one at the moment. I've got the Zeiss Icon Iconta. It's got two rolls, two shots on it. And I've got uh, a Yashica ZoomTech 70 which has got a 36 exposure roll in it and I've hardly used it. So I'm going to take some photographs in here and then I'm going to walk a different way. I'm not going to go down the steep bit, but I came up, I came up the steep bit. I'm going to walk behind the Prince of Wales, which is just over there. I don't know if you can see it, just poking out there. Let me just uh, zoom in. The public house that I love to frequent. That's it, just there. That's doesn't want to, to focus, but there it is, that's it there. And then I am going to, oh, 
Oh god, she doesn't want to focus. Hang on a sec. Better take some photographs overlooking the valley and of the Tump, which is uh, Macken Mountain, before heading back down to have some lunch, pack my order. I'm still waiting for a payment on one. That's fine. I'll leave it for another day and then I'll remind them tomorrow. Send them a reminded message. And I'm just going to uh, finish the film in the Iconta, shoot some shots off of this. It's got 36 in it and I'm only on shot five. And I'm not sure on the Yashika. I'll let you know in a bit. But I'm going to do that now and I'll see you in a while anything yet. I just had a quick look at the history and apparently it's a Mariah Baptist Chapel, it's a beautiful church down in, in Risca by the way, I've been in it, um, was originally founded in 1835 and this was it, was, it was a very small chapel which would be right with the size, or a small church. Soon outgrow, outgrew its um, congregation and they asked Lord Tredegar for a spot next to the Tredegar Park and Tredegar Park in Risca was called that because it was gifted to the people of Risca by Lord Stiger. And he gave them the land for the chapel or the church and they built the one that is now in existence here. So the chapel's, the, the church is long gone, which is where I'm sitting by now, but the churchyard or the graveyard remains. So I'm gonna have a look, see if I can find any photographs of it on my phone. I know there are some somewhere. To see if I can find, find them and I'll see if I can show you them, but it'll be on here. I'm not gonna try and upload them onto the thing. It takes too long. And then I'm gonna do some pictures. I've just found an article on the South Wales Argus website, so if you go and Google, if you're interested, Mariah Baptist Church, Churchyard, Risca, you will get this article about it. So it was originally built in 1818, but it was part of the Bethesda chapels. Um, and in 1835, they separated and built the church down in Risca. It was then forgotten about for about 100 years, and then in the 1980s, it was uh, rediscovered um, obviously I am now sitting on one of the walls of what would have been the, the, the church originally there was around 100 people buried in this churchyard but there were only 36 graves not all of them are readable although in the 80s 124 headstones were counted so that doesn't really tally but there you go some of them, five of the people who were buried here are victims of the mining disaster at Blackvane Colliery. Um, risk of colliery explosions buried here. Yeah, so it's fascinating. I love anything historical. I love history about the where I live. Um, I wasn't born here. I was born in Bristol. But I still love anything to do with history, Welsh history. And in fact, this church where I am sitting now was the last church in Risca to hold services and, and the surrounding area exclusively in Welsh, which I find fascinating. Um, so I'm going to have a quick look round, take a few photos. I might show you some of the inscriptions if they're readable. And I will look for a photograph of it as it was in the 80s. It might be on the Mariah Facebook page, I'm not sure. And we'll have a look. But I'm actually really enjoying this. Um, I, I would have liked to have seen the graveyard before they changed it when it was still full of slabs and stones and higgledy-piggledy and crosses. I know there was one, I'm sure there was one with a cross on it. These are the only two slab stones. You've got to be careful up here though, because there's no fence. If you get too close to the edge, here, and you are straight down into the brambles by the canal. <laughs> so that's, that's never good. <laughs> that's never good. So... But yeah, so this one says on this side, also in memory of Elizabeth, second wife of the aforesaid, who died suddenly, November 21st, 1889, I think, age 55. So his first wife's buried in here as well, I believe. In memory, wife of John Matthews, Mary Anne and daughter, I can't read the name. Wife of John Matthews and his daughter Mary Ann died age 11. Also their children who died in infancy, how sad. And you get that a lot obviously with these old graves that uh, children that died so young. This one you can read bits of it in memory of 
Margaret, daughter of John and Anne Bud, Budding, Aberaeron, or Aber something. Died January 7th, 1848, aged eight months. Oh. And James, aged nine months. Also the said John Budding. He died aged 60. 61. There is something on the other side as well. So, in affection, in affectionate remembrance of Anne Rudd Budding, who died June 21st, 1877, aged 67. Oh, that's sad. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to sit down. Because my back's aching now. This is my second walk of the day. I have another one to do because I have to go and get Jen from school. And to think that, I don't know why this is built up like this. And down, probably because it's the, hill, the way the hill is. Um, yeah, I've got to go and do Jen. Looks like there's some stuff under there. I haven't looked at that, I'll have a look at that in a minute. Just sitting back here for a minute, having a little rest before I carry on. Um, I've done a turn with the old Nikon. I'm going to use the She Connect. Finish the one roll of film in the other camera, which is great, I can take that out when I get home. Oh, my back's aching. There's a few more foundation stones over a load of ivy and brambles over there. I wouldn't want to go and try and pull them out. They're not graves, they're too thick, they're blocks. So it must be part of the, the chapel wall. I wish I could have seen it before they knocked it down. They brought it down in the early, in the mid 1800s. So photography was in its infancy. Still fascinating, I love history. Right, I could crack on with the other camera and see if I can find that photo. I won't be long. I will see you soon. I'm still here. I'm on the South Wales August uh, page. If you look at the article, there is a photograph of the chapel and it was, it was definitely there. Um, and the old cemetery, or churchyard as it is. And these blocks are actually the bases of headstones. So they would be like the ones that had crosses on them. It's really hard to see, but I've seen... Uh, pictures of them on again on that uh, that article and now I can actually see some writing on the base of it so what I'm going to do is in winter when all this has died off all been cut back because obviously they don't cut back till late October because of nesting season they may not cut it back but it'll die off anyway because of winter I'll pop up here and we'll have another look at these stones but I'm just gonna have a quick wander around with the other camera and then we're going to go down to the front of the Prince of Wales, which we could just see, and have a look over the valley before I go home and have some lunch. Back in there. I was going to belch then. 20 to 1. I'm going to make a cup of tea and I'm going to have some lunch. I'm going to go and pack my order that I've got to send off today. And then I'm going to go upstairs. I might start filming the camera, sorry, sorry, Conta camera. Now, I said yesterday that I hadn't done much of vlogging yesterday and the day before was a bit off. Uh, and I'll explain why. Um, a, I forgot, that's the main reason. But a very beloved member of the Marilyn community passed away on the weekend. Her name was Claudia and she was a Marilyn impersonator from the Netherlands. She went by the name of Memory Monroe. So She's got a lot of work out there on YouTube of her being Marilyn. She was in a film called, I want to say, Alia, where she played Marilyn in Korea, and I did watch that bit, and she was fantastic. She was a lovely person. She's been through a, had been through a hell of a lot in recent years. Uh, she'd lost her mum. She'd lost touch with friends because of COVID, and she'd been very, very unhappy. So when one of the Marilyn community dies... It's like a member of your family dying, because we're a family. And, um... Long-time members of the Marilyn community. Not that I'm begrudging anybody becoming a fan. Anybody's welcome to become a member of the Marilyn community. We love every Marilyn fan. Uh, we may try and educate you as to facts, and please don't take it the wrong way if we do. We just want the truth of her life out there. We don't like over-processed and photoshopped images because we know how Marilyn protected her image. But it's like a family. I've been a member of that family for nearly 40 years. 
and I love every member and we do lose them obviously we lose them from time to time and some hit harder than others Ross was one that hit everybody very hard I, I met him once when he came over here he lived in Australia and uh, Claudia's another one she was just a lovely human being uh, so that's why and I'm still uh, tearing up thinking about her but that's why anyway I'm home I'm gonna take the roll of time out of this camera because I want to develop it later woo I'll just show you what the results are like and then have my lunch, pack my thing, start filming a overview of this camera when I've cleaned it up a little bit. So I'm gonna pop on and I'll see you in a bit. Hi, back from school run now. If I sound a bit worn out, I'm knackered. My back's hurting. Jennifer's downstairs, I'm gonna get changed and go down and be sit with her for a bit. I've, I've walked so much today, I'm not used to it, I feel sick. sit downstairs, chill out with Jen and watch some TV, maybe read my book. Well day, that's a lot of walking for me, I'm not used to it, it's probably why I feel a bit rough, but it's all good, it's all, gonna, where's Marilyn up there? Gonna get me healthy, hopefully, fitter, but right now I need a rest. Good morning, it's Thursday morning and I am about to develop a roll of film from one of the cameras, not one of the ones we were using yesterday, but another one. I might do one from the one we were using yesterday, but it won't be until this afternoon. So, um, we're just getting all the bits together. I'm putting it all in and I'm about to put the film in and shut it up. And I thought, Hang on, I haven't got a spiral. It's not a good one down though, we should to put the film on it. <laughs> I'm very tired after all the walking. I stayed in nearly 10,000 steps, which is not, which is a lot for me because I don't do a lot of walking. So I'm achy today. Um, so I've already done my five listings. I've got one to pack and sale to send later, which I will sort out. Um, I'm going to do a bit of filming on the Zeiss Icon uh, video, and I'm also going to do a cover and chat. And I've got to put the brush away, so I've better crack on. I'll see you in a bit. Here's a, the roll of film I've just developed. It looks quite good actually. It's just hanging up to dry in my bathroom. It's. Uh, Nice little camera, that camera, yeah. That's good, I'll be able to list that. Um, I'll get it drafted the next day or so. How about stay to do some more work? Right, I've done a bit more filming on the uh, camera thing. The only thing to do now is to go out and actually take photos with it, which is going to be weird because I can't hold a digital camera and film myself. So I'm going to see if Paul can film me on Saturday. We'll be going out on Saturday, hopefully, because I get my car back to see his mum. I said I want to walk around the cemetery and take some photos. A, because it's walking, and B, because I've got cameras to test. That way, he can take some pictures of me, or he can film me, doing this. Yeah. Only for a little bit. It's only for, it's only going to be a little bit of thing, and then I'll, uh, re I'll show them how to, you know, I'll do the rest of it filming uh, when I get home, which will be literally... Um, God, what's it called? Developing the film, taking the film out, developing the film, and then I'll scan them in and I'll edit it together. It should be interesting because I never put the photos up and I have to find some music to go on the end. Hey everybody, it's coming up to quarter past one. I've done whatever I can do for the day. I'm too knackered. So I did my five listings, I've done my accounts, that's all updated. Pat my order. I filmed a bit more of the Zeiss Icon video. I filmed a colour and chat that is currently being edited, ready to be uploaded for tomorrow. <sighs> you might notice there's um, a bit of a gap on that bookshelf. Uh, yeah, I was rearranging some of the Marilyn books when I found that one of the shelves had actually collapsed. So these little shelves are put together with, I want to call them lugs. They're sort of like little pins that they sit on. And they've broken off and I haven't got any spares. Well, I have, but I don't know where they are. They're around. I need to search for them. They might be in this room somewhere. The problem is the lugs have actually broken off into the holes that they sit in. So I need to do a bit of book rearranging. Now, I have a plan to rearrange all three bookcases that are behind me, as you can see. But for today, because I'm so tired and I'm aching, I'm thinking of just trying to find somewhere to put these. 
these big Marin books that caused the issue and that's why it's, they're too heavy for that shelf so I'm going to put them on a, a fixed shelf. Unfortunately the fixed shelf, the only fixed shelf I've got is the one, either a bottom one where I'd have to move two shelves of books instead of just, you know, and the shelf that my, some of my colouring books are on. So I'm thinking I'm going to move some of my colouring books around for now just so I can get them off of the bed so that I can find the spare lugs and see about rearranging the bookcases and when I've done that at some point I might even do a new Marilyn bookshelf tour I might do I have got a few I haven't read though so I need to either try and get through those or just do them as ones I haven't read so they're not on the shelves yet so I have over 300 books on Marilyn Monroe, including foreign language and fictionals and duplicates. It's going to be a big job because there are things in front of the books on the shelf. So, for instance, I'll show you, show you this. It should look kind of like that. So there should be like pictures. There's some very tiny little books there. Not worth putting in a shelf. Takes up space that's wasted. And we've got a picture of Marilyn as a baby, we've got a Marilyn figurine and a little trinket box. There's another picture here which will be going on a different shelf, but most of the shelves have junk on it. I'm not gonna lie, I am not the tidiest person. So the plan at the moment is to clear off these shelves Either the, the two bottom ones, no, the, those two, not the bottom one, because the bottom shelf is fixed, so I can't move it. It's got to stay that size, which is fine. But that means that that bottom shelf, because it's fixed, is going to be quite sturdy. But I need to clear off two shelves worth of colouring books. Now, I have got the bottom shelf, as you can see, there are some photography books on there, which I am going to put on my colouring chest for now. I was trying to sort out the colouring chest as well. There is a load of rubbish here. I'm trying to, I'm going to try and get this sorted. Because as you can see, there's stuff everywhere. Books, DVDs, they should be in the other room. Money boxes, they should be in the other room. All sorts. So I'm going to try and sort this out <clears throat> before I go and get Jen. But I've got to shift all these colouring books. I'll see you in a bit and we'll see how I do. Lucky for me, I don't have to move all the books today. I got time to sort things out, tidy up and move things around a bit at a time. So that's good. Um, I moved, sorted out the current books, moved them around and that shelf of books I moved from there have gone there and there's actually a bit of space on the edge, which is quite good because I've got some standing up ones over here that could go there. I'll stick them in in a minute. Um, so yeah, obviously the rest of it's still a mess, but it's a start. And what will happen is I will keep doing a little bit every day. So tomorrow, once I've done all my work, I will come in and I will do a bit more. So for instance, that jar is my TBR jar. I'll try and find somewhere else for it to go. That book has got to go over on the bookcase over there. There's a lot of Marion postcards. There's some crayons that can go under there and things like that. So yeah, there's a glass up there needs to go downstairs. DVDs need to go into the other room because that's where the... Well, there's DVD player from here as well, but... I want to clear the shelves off properly so that I can actually, um, I don't know anymore, I've, I've lost the plot, <laughs> sort it out. So I'm just going to go onto the computer and do a little bit of scanning onto library thing. I've got those fictional books to do because I'm going to be moving this all around. So I need the entire Marilyn collection scanned. I might do some of the foreign language books if I don't have an English version of them. Yeah, so there's a little bit to do up there that I'm going to do now. Eventually I will be swapping them over so the fiction books and the foreign language books will be over here in the first three shelves. The bottom shelf will stay as it is because it's a massive box shelf. And then I will sort out another shelf or whatever and I will fix that shelf when I find some lugs. Um, it just means that this shelf's going to change because it's going to be a bit bigger and that one's going to be smaller. But I'm going to crack on because it's nearly time to get ready, um, go to the post office and get Jen. 
Good morning everybody, it's Friday morning. I mean, not that it matters to me because I don't go to get up and go work. I do eBay and I've had two sales today. So after lunch, I'll pack them up and take them down when I go and get Jen, like normal. Um, I've done my five listings for the day. I've still got something like 29 listings and tomorrow I'm going to be, I don't normally work on a Saturday, but it's just easy to do photographing when I'm downstairs because I like to be the side of the table that Paul sits at when he's working at the desk. So tomorrow I'm going to be photographing. I've got some scans to do. I'll try and either do that tonight or tomorrow. Um, so I've done my listings. I've done my accounts are all up to date now. I also keep it written down on postage costs. Um, there, Just so I, at the end of the month, I know how much I've got to put back into the account I use to pay my postage. It's like a postage account. So there's that. Um, I've put live the car and chat I filmed yesterday. I've got a camera here that needs to go downstairs to sell. I've got another camera here that I need to test to see if it works. And I've got that Zeiss icon to finish. Um, I'm going to go to bed and colour in a bit. I'm having the rest of the morning to do very little because I'm so tired. Tonight, I'll pick a chair up. Come home. And i got to get money out for my mechanic. I got some out yesterday. I'll get some more out today. And uh, hopefully I'll have my car back tonight and we'll be able to go out tomorrow. Yay! Um, but we're going to go up the pub for dinner tonight. It's like, it's cheaper than getting a takeaway. And it's nice cooked food. It is filling enough. We'll order a sandwich when we get back. I have ordered a couple of things off a TikTok shop. I ordered some markers for a start with, which was naughty. I think they were 48 for eight quid. They do have 168 for £19.10. I'm so tempted to buy them. I, I might treat myself once I, I you know, see what my, my, once I've got this a car paid for. Um, I want to get that down because I need to move that. It's just something I'm thinking of. I'm trying to sort out my colouring pens and put together all my things like all my glitter gel pens, all my uh, metallic gel pens and so on into two sets of drawers I've got. Well, one set for that and one set for some other things. So I might do that as well in a minute. Um, I've got a couple ideas for some colouring chats because people have been leaving me information. Um, oh, there's a red one of those up there. That's got to go downstairs. That's good. I've <laughs> just noted, noted something. I'm not going to do anything on this today. I might do tomorrow. Uh, I might come in later and do some book scanning for thing, but I'm not sure where to start. I might leave that one until I get rid of some of those books there. I've got a bookcase there. And I've still got all the ones in the attic as well, which is the photography books are up there. God, forget about them. Because I am going to put them. I know. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go and do some colouring in the bedroom now and, and you know, chill out for a bit. I'll see you soon. Woohoo! Oh, it's the afternoon. Friday afternoon. We're in the park. Jennifer's playing with Alex, who's just been to Greg's by the look of it. Jennifer had an ice cream from the van. I'm covered in it. Going up the pub later. So we're told her five or ten minutes, and then we're going home. Because they stopped doing five food at half five or five, depending on what mood they're in. And I want to make sure I have my fish and chips because they ain't cooking tonight. Cars cost me £350, but that's okay. I've still got enough money. I'm still going to be okay. I'm just cracking on. I'm just 50 quid short and I can't be off to go to the bank, so I'll get Paul to get it out tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> it's at the pub. Hello, oh, that was quick. I know, because I started doing them for somebody else. <laughs> oh, here comes the fish and chips. I got uh, your The important people have arrived. Yes. You mean the regular? It's Saturday afternoon. We're at Nanny Sally's. Got the car back. Way. Yes. Hello, There's Jennifer. Happy. You gonna say hello? Yeah. You gonna say hello? Snake. You playing? Snake. Snake. Oh, I want to have a look at that. Have a look at that. Go for a walk in a bit. <laughs> Come for a walk in St Willow's Cemetery. Sat on a bench so Jennifer can have something to eat because she's hungry. That's what these were designed for, all the Victorian garden cemeteries. Lovely here. I like this cemetery, it's so peaceful. Well, they should be, they're all dead. They're not gonna talk back, are they? Bless them. 
with Jen. I just wanted to take a picture of this hole in my house. But you're not holding a house, it's not a house, it's a chapel. Pretend that I'm holding it. No. It's an artistic idea though. It's old. Whoa. The older part of the cemetery is my favourite bit. We'll come for a walk on my own one day. It's very overgrown. A lot worse than last time I came. And even my favourite uh, stone is very dirty. <coughs> it's a shame. Very overgrown. I know it's, it's hard for the, the council to keep up with even the older part of the cemetery clear. So you can see this bit's quite trimmed. It might be they're working on it and they're working their way round, but obviously maintenance of the graves is down to the family members. And some of these people may not have family anymore. Because they're so old. So, so this is my favourite one. And she's got a lot dirtier since the last time I came. She used to positively glow and uh, now she looks like she needs a good clean but uh, she may not have any family left. Hi everybody, it is Sunday afternoon. I know I've not been vlogging too much at the, this weekend. I haven't really been doing too much. What did we do yesterday? We went out, you saw us out, um, but today I had a nice lie-in, got up, breakfast, went shopping, popped into mum's to take something for mum and dad, and then came home. That's pretty much it. I did win a book in a giveaway on Facebook, the Terry Pratchett uh, book club, one of the uh, members there we had got three copies of various, a copy of various three books to give away and she just said put whatever you want or the one you're after in the comments below so I put The Carpet People which is the first novel I've never read it so it's a paperback copy and I'm happy just happy to have it I've, I never win anything on those I enter them every now and again but to actually win one I am so excited I got a copy I got a book from my mum today that dad bought her from the charity shop so I'm going to add that to my TBR list and put it in the pile the two I bought yesterday in a charity shop, I haven't brought up yet. I'll bring them up later on, but I am so hot. It's a beautiful day. I made us uh, some tuna, mayonnaise and onion sandwiches. For me and Paul, Jennifer had ham sandwiches. Uh, Jennifer decided to watch TV and me and Paul went outside and now I'm really hot because it is absolutely stunning out there. So it is a gorgeous weather. So I'm hoping to go out again this evening when it's cooled down a bit because I don't do well in the heat. It's, it, it was getting a bit too hot for me so I came in. But now it's back to reality and I have to sort out the washing so I can get more washing done so I can put more washing away because washing in this house, it's never ending. It's the never ending laundry. Whoa. The never ending laundry, as I say. It is. We must, I mean, Jennifer goes through potentially three sets of clothes a day. So especially on... A school day when she goes through obviously her uniform and then she puts on a change of clothes and then she puts on pajamas when it's time for bed uh, and then all that goes into the wash although her jeans she tends to wash, wear multiple days so that's not too bad but still it's a lot of washing but uh, I'm gonna put the fan on I'm that hot I really am that hot so I'll see you in a bit Sunday night time for bed i got to be honest, after I did the washing earlier, I had a good sleep and I'm not that tired, so I'm going to read for a, couple, for a little bit. So I'm currently reading two books. Let me just find a point. I am reading Songs of Willow Frost by Jamie Ford. And I am reading The Hollywood Book of Death. So I'm going to read a bit of both of those tonight and see how far I can get through them. I've been playing games my phone because it's fun but I'm going to play for a little longer then I'm going to read for a bit so that's it that's another week over with Whoa. much of a sameness I know but uh, that's life isn't it we'll do it all again tomorrow the plan for next week I will explain when I see you in the morning so yeah you take it easy guys and I'll see you in the next ones <laughs>